Losing teeth is a rite of passage for children, but sometimes they're knocked out and it's up to us to know what to do. So today I'm going to take you through the emergency management of a dental avulsion, telling you what you can do to save that tooth. Let's think first about primary versus permanent teeth. Primary teeth are also called deciduous teeth or sometimes milk teeth. They start coming through any time from about six months of age and they start to fall out around the child's fifth or sixth birthday. Sometimes it's not that clear whether an avulsed tooth is deciduous or permanent, but there's a handy trick to tell them apart. Deciduous teeth are smaller, they're whiter and they've got a smooth top where they've been worn down over time. Permanent teeth are larger, they're creamier and they have a bumpy top where they've not been worn down yet. And of course, always ask the child because some are just brilliant at knowing which tooth is which. An avulsion is when a tooth is knocked out of its socket. The way we manage them depends on whether the tooth is deciduous or permanent. If it's deciduous, then it'll it's just come out a little earlier than expected, but that's okay. Other than checking for other dental trauma, there's not much else for us to do. Deciduous teeth you see should never be reimplanted, as this can damage the permanent tooth behind it. Just a routine follow-up with the child's own dentist within the next few days is all that's needed. Now it's a different matter if the avulsed tooth is a permanent tooth because we have a key role to play here. An avulsed permanent tooth is a dental emergency and the clock starts ticking from the minute the tooth is out of its socket. The best intervention is to get that tooth back in its socket as fast as possible. Ideally on the scene if the parents can do this, but if they can't then the next best thing for them to do is to get the tooth in some milk and get to a dentist or a doctor fast. Here are my top tips for reimplanting a tooth. Make sure you're holding the tooth by the crown and not the root because the root is where the periodontal cells are and we don't want to damage them. Lightly rinse it with some saline and if there's a clot in the socket, gently irrigate it with some saline and then pat it dry with some gauze. Then gently reimplant the tooth using the neighbouring teeth as a guide. Once it's in, ask the child to bite down on some gauze while you make a splint. You can use the metal piece from a Hudson oxygen mask cut to shape with some trauma scissors. Or you can use foil from a suture pack with the corners rounded. Or my favourite is just to use some kitchen grade tin foil. You've then got a couple of options. Either dry the teeth and use tissue adhesive to glue a strip of foil bridge across the reimplanted tooth and its two neighbouring teeth. Or mould the foil around the teeth, a bit like a gum shield. This is easier and it's what I do in practice. Check the child's tetanus status and give a booster dose if they're behind. Prescribe a course of amoxicillin for five days, although don't forget to check for penicillin allergy. And make sure you speak to your local on-call dental or MaxFax service for urgent follow-up, because this tooth needs really permanent splinting to keep it in place. Reimplanting teeth is really easy. The bottom line is the false permanent teeth must be reimplanted and splinted as soon as possible and then the dentist or the MaxFax doctor needs to see them urgently. This is a time-sensitive intervention. The sooner the tooth is back in the socket, the better the outcome. If you have any tips or tricks for splinting teeth, please put them in the comments below. And to learn more about dental trauma, have a look at the Dental Trauma post on the Don't Forget the Bubbles website. Okay.